Hi, I'm Wendy King. I'm an Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the Graduate School of Public Health at the University of Pittsburgh. Obesity is associated with significant joint pain and physical limitations, such as difficulty walking, bending, carrying, or lifting. Obesity can also limit pain and function by excess weight bearing on the joints, increased overall inflammation, reduced strength for body mass index, depressive symptoms. So there are many ways that obesity can contribute to pain and physical function. Over the last decade, the evidence has been mounting that pain and physical and function do improve post-bariatric surgery. However, there's limited data on the variability and durability of response post-surgery. The goal of our study was to assess changes pre to post-surgery in bodily pain and joint specific pain as well as physical function, both perceived and objectively measured walking capacity. This study was done in the context of the longitudinal assessment of bariatric surgery 2. This is an NIH-funded study. It was done at 10 hospitals at six centers throughout the United States. Patients undergoing primary bariatric surgery were recruited between 2006 and 2009. They completed research assessments both pre-surgery and annually post-surgery. We asked them questions on their physical function and bodily pain using standardized, validated measures. We also asked them questions on symptoms of osteoarthritis for their hip and knees. They completed a 400 meter timed corridor walk so we could look at their ability to complete the walk and time to complete the walk, as well as pain during the walk. And then they also completed questions on medication use, satisfaction with pain, um, joint surgeries, and other issues relating to pain and function. The primary finding of the study was that 57% had clinically meaningful improvements in their bodily pain and 77% did in their physical function. In addition, 60% did in their walk time. When we looked specifically at patients that had symptoms of osteoarthritis at baseline, three-fourths had improvements in their hip pain, knee, and function. Next, we looked at durability of response and we saw that Around the same percentage had improvements in walk time and symptoms of osteoarthritis through three years. However, there were small declines in physical function and bodily pain, such that at three years, 49% had bodily pain improvements and 70% had physical function improvements compared to baseline. We also looked at factors that were related to improvement, the likelihood of improvement, and found that younger patients, patients with fewer depressive symptoms and higher income patients were more likely to have improvements in pain and function following surgery. In addition, those that had um, remission of diabetes, lost more weight, and had improvement in depressive symptoms were more likely to have improvement. And interestingly, when we controlled for weight loss and other factors, there was no difference in likelihood of improvement between procedures. Although the majority of patients had improvements in pain and physical function, it's important to consider three-year status and note that a third of patients reported um, dissatisfaction with their pain level and also reported taking pain medication in the last week for their back, knees, or hips. In addition, a quarter of patients still reported having walking limitations, walking a few blocks, and a quarter of patients had objectively measured mobility deficit in the corridor walk. Among a large geographically diverse cohort of patients, the majority experienced clinically meaningful improvements in pain and physical function through three years. There was some deterioration of effect between one and three years, which means that it will be important to follow these patients long-term to really understand the long-term implications of bariatric surgery on joint pain, overall bodily pain, and function.